Hey, it is two o'clock and it is Monday, so it's time for yoga. Um, today we are going to be focused on twists, uh, which can be awesome and they're a great way to stretch your spine and then they can also be super confrontational. If you're like me and you've got scoliosis, it can be really frustrating. So my advice for today's practice is be patient with yourself, enjoy, and as always, take breaks whenever you need. So I'm going to move myself back to my mat. Um, if you have blocks, go ahead and grab two for today. Blocks can be really helpful for twists, um, especially if you're a little bit newer. We're going to start on our backs. And then just bend your knees, place your feet flat on the floor. Let yourself get comfortable. So it doesn't matter where your arms go just so long as you feel like you can settle in and start to connect with your breath. So as you feel yourself supported by the mat, take a nice big inhale through your nose, filling yourself up completely full. And then exhale, open your mouth, let it go. And again, nice big inhale through your nose. Exhale, open your mouth, let it go. And one more time, inhaling. And exhaling. And then start to find that steady, even breath in and out through your nose. So no matter what your practice is, you always start with the breath. And maybe you lightly constrict the sides of your throat and you find that ujjayi breath, that ocean sounding breath. And then as you're ready, you're gonna cross your right ankle over top of your left knee. And you're gonna draw that left knee up into your chest, just giving yourself a little thread the eye of the needle to begin. And so we're just kind of stretching and lengthening that lower portion of the spine as well as the outer hip. And let it be a pretty gentle stretch, right? So it doesn't need to be your deepest thread the eye of the needle of your life. And then set your left foot down onto the ground, open your arms up in that cactus shape and draw your left knee down towards the ground with your right foot. So you're ooh, got a little pop in my spine there. It's like a little gentle twist. So again, not super deep. You're just starting to open up that left side of your waist, getting acquainted with our theme today. And then come back up to center. Set that right foot down. Cross the left ankle over top of the right knee and then draw the right knee up into your chest. Coming into that thread the eye of the needle on side two. So already you may notice that one side is pretty different from the other. My right side is a little tighter than my left. Yours may be the opposite or you may feel like they're pretty even. Just give that gentle little pull the left thigh bone towards the chest. And then release the right foot down, open the arms up into that cactus shape and draw the right knee down towards the ground. You can keep your gaze up towards the ceiling. So in this very sort of more open twist, it's kind of a big stretch through that outer right hip, through that right side waist. And then inhale, come back up to center. Set your left foot down next to your right. And you're gonna reach your arms up and overhead. So we're gonna stabilize the core on our backs today. So you're gonna take an inhale here. And then exhale, lift your chest and reach your arms forward like a traditional little crunch. Keep steady here. Inhale, extend the legs out long. And then exhale, just set the feet down, lift your chest a little higher. Inhale, reach the arms up and back behind you. So we're gonna repeat that again. Exhale, lift your chest. Inhale, lift your legs. Exhale, set the feet down, lift the chest a little higher. And inhale, reach the arms up and back behind. Just a couple more. 
Exhale, lift your chest, draw your belly button towards your spine. Inhale, extend the legs long. Exhale, set the feet down, lift the chest a little higher. Inhale, reach the arms up and back behind you. Last time, exhale, draw the chest up. Inhale, extend the legs. Exhale, set the feet down, lift the chest a little higher. Inhale, reach the arms up and back behind you and then draw the knees up into your chest. Start to rock yourself all the way back and forth until you come all the way up onto all fours. Plant your hands down flat. You can walk yourself back so you're centered on your mat. Tuck your toes and lift your hips up and back behind you, coming into your first downward facing dog of today. So as always, I really like to pedal out the feet here. My body gets pretty um, tight and sticky for me. So these first couple moments are my favorite to just kind of open up. Inhale, lift up high on your tippy toes, draw your belly button towards your spine, and then exhale, send those heels to the floor. They're gonna land on the floor or they're just gonna reach in that direction. Doesn't matter if they touch. And then inhale, glide forward, plank pose, top of a push-up. If you need to adjust your back feet, you will, so that you can really be in a plank. Your shoulders aren't too far past your wrists. And then exhale, press it back to your dog. So now that I've lengthened the length of my dog, my heels don't come to the floor, and that's totally fine. I'm just stretching the backs of the legs. Inhale, glide forward. Think long. So the crown of your head tries to reach the front of the room. The tailbone and the heels try to reach the back of the room. And then exhale, press it back to your dog. And one more time, just encouraging a lot of length in that spine. Inhale, lengthen, lift through your belly, activate through your legs. Exhale, press it back to your dog. Bend your knees, shift your hips back, send your gaze forward like a cat about to pounce. And then exhale, take a lot of steps or maybe one big step all the way up to the top of the mat. Just let your head hang here for a second. And then fingertips in line with toe tips or hands on the shins. Inhale, lengthen the chest, coming to a flat back. Exhale, release over your legs. Press down through your feet, sweep your arms all the way up and overhead. And then exhale, draw hands to prayer at your heart. Find that even stance through all four corners of your feet. Activate through your legs, balancing through the curves of your spine, softening your shoulders away from your ears. You can even kind of nod your head or roll your neck around, especially if you're feeling some tension there. And then let yourself come to the strong, steady Tadasana. So all of your standing poses are rooted here in this standing pose. Take a big inhale through your nose. Exhale, open your mouth, let it go. Blink your eyes open and inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. Exhale, dive and fold forward over your legs. Inhale, lengthen your chest, come to that flat back position. Exhale, plant your hands, step it back into your plank pose, top of a push-up, and then you can bring your knees down or keep them lifted, shift forward, lower yourself all the way down to the ground. Walk your hands back into that chaturanga shape, hug the elbows in, and then reach your right foot way back towards the back of the mat. And then reach your left foot way back towards the back of the mat. And then press down through your palms, peel the chest forward and up into your little baby cobra. So before we ever begin to twist the spine, we begin to lengthen the spine so that it's ready for that revolution. Exhale, release. And then again, thinking the legs, the tailbone, reach back, the chest, the crown of the head, reach forward, lift, strengthening through that upper spine. Exhale, release. And then your third round can be a cobra, or it could be an up dog, pressing down through the tops of your feet, lifting your chest all the way up. And then exhale, pressing it back to your downward facing dog again, finding that reach of the heels towards the floor. 
As you lift the hips towards the ceiling, you reach the crown of your head in between your hands, right? It won't physically ever touch, but it's like you're tractioning through that back body. And then bend your knees, shift your hips back, send your gaze forward, exhale, step or walk your way up to the top of your mat. Inhale, lengthen the chest forward, coming into that flat back position. Exhale, release. Press down through your feet, sweep your arms up and overhead on the inhale. And then exhale, draw hands to prayer at your heart. And we do two more. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Now one breath per movement. Inhale, lengthen the chest forward. Exhale, plant the hand, step the left foot back, and then the right foot back. Plank pose, shift forward, bend the elbows, chaturanga. Rolling over the tops of the feet, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, pressing it back to that downward facing dog. Stabilizing through the hands and the feet. Engaging through the upper arms, ears in line with your biceps. Head reaches in between your hands. And then bend your knees, shift your hips back, send your gaze forward. This time step or maybe you start to jump your way to the top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, release. Press down through the feet, sweep the arms up and overhead. And then exhale, draw hands to prayer. Last time, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen, flat back. Exhale, plant your hands, step or float your way back through your vinyasa, or maybe you skip that chaturanga up dog and you go straight to a downward facing dog. You're going to reach your right leg up and back behind you, coming into that three-legged variation. You can open up through your hip here, keep your shoulders stable and steady. Maybe you bend your knee. Straighten that leg all the way back behind you. And exhale, draw the knee up to the nose, round through the spine. And then getting a little rhythm going, inhale, reach that leg up and back. Exhale again, draw the knee to the nose, round through the spine. So you really get used to this kind of movement. Inhale, reach that leg up and back behind you. Exhale, draw the knee all the way up to the nose. Step the foot in between the two hands. Lower that back knee down to the ground. Untuck the toe and inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. Coming to this very familiar Anjaneyasana. So again, you're lengthening the tailbone down and lengthening the spine towards the ceiling. So it's like you've stretched yourself as long as you can go. And then you're gonna open your arms out to the side walls and without letting your hips swivel, they're gonna stay right where they are. You're just gonna to start to rotate your chest over towards the right side of the room. And then inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. And exhale, come into that twist. And one more time, inhale, lift. Exhale, twist. And then inhale, reach the arms up and overhead. Bring the hands down to the ground. Tuck your back toe, lift your back knee. So you're in that high runner's lunge, fingertips are on the floor or on blocks. Spin the back heel down to the ground. Press down through the feet, sweep the arms up and overhead, press that front leg to straight. And then reach your left arm forward towards the front of the room so your hands make this big L shape. So your shoulders stay rooted, shift forward, bend the elbow, and you first bend the elbow, that's a knee. Bend your knee until it stacks right up over the ankle and you realize that warrior one is also a twist. And then reach the left arm up to meet the right. Take one more nice big inhale here. And then exhale, circle the hands all the way down to the floor. Maybe you step it straight back to your dog. Maybe you take it through a vinyasa. That is always your call. And then you inhale, lift the left leg up and back behind you, opening up through the hip, bending through your knee. 
Finding that little release through the top of the hip flexor. And then straightening that left leg way back behind you. Exhale, draw the left knee up into the nose, around through the upper spine. Draw the belly button in. And again, inhale, reach the leg up. Exhale, knee to the nose. One more time, inhale, reach that leg up. Exhale, draw the knee to the nose. Left foot steps in between your two hands. Back knee comes all the way down to the ground. You can pat it up if that first side felt like, ooh, I was on my knee for a long time. And then inhale, reach the arms up and overhead so you can throw like a little blanket underneath or roll up the side of your mat. Draw the tailbone down towards the floor. Hug the outer left hip in. Reach the arms up high so your spine is as long as it can possibly be. And then open the arms out wide to the side walls and start to rotate just your upper spine around towards the front of the room. So twists really happen in the mid to upper spine. The hips are not involved. They stay stable. Inhale, reach the arms up. And exhale, twist it open. One more time. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, twist it open. And then inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, hands come down to the ground. Tuck your back toe, lift your back knee, come into this high runner's lunge, reaching that crown head forward towards the front of the room. Spin the back heel down towards the ground. Press down through the feet, sweep the arms all the way up and overhead. And then press that front leg to straight and now your right hand comes down. So you make a big L shape with your hands. Keep drawing that right shoulder back as you bend through your left knee, coming into that warrior one. So whether you're just getting used to these movements, you're newer to yoga, or you've been doing yoga forever and you're just starting to uncover deeper and deeper subtleties, working this way is really useful. Reach that right arm up to meet the left. Notice that little bit of stretch you get through that right side waist. Take one more inhale here. And then exhale, hands come all the way down to the ground. Step it back. Maybe it's a vinyasa. Maybe it's straight to your downward facing dog. Press it back to that dog when you're ready. Bend your knees. Shift your hips back. Send your gaze forward. Exhale, step forward. Jump your way up to the top of your mat. Inhale, lengthen the chest forward. Exhale, release. Shift the weight back into your heels. Bend your knees nice and low. Utkatasana, chair pose. Arms reach nice and high. Come on up to standing. Draw hands to prayer at your heart. Close your eyes. Reconnect with Tadasana. And then we're going to take that warrior one in the context of flow. So blink your eyes open, bend your knees nice and low into that Utkatasana. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen the chest forward, Ardha. Exhale, plant the hands, step four. Jump your way back, take it through your vinyasa or go straight to your dog. When you come back to that dog, that right foot steps right up in between the two. The back heel spins down. You inhale, rise up for just a single breath in that warrior one. Exhale, hands come down. Step it back and take it through your vinyasa. Left foot steps in between your two hands. Back heel spins to the ground. Inhale, rise up, warrior one. Exhale, hands come down. Step it back and take it through. Five smooth breaths here. And then bend your knees, shift your hips back, send your gaze forward. Exhale, step or jump. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, release. Bend your knees nice and low. Utkatasana chair. 
Come on up to standing. Draw hands to prayer to your heart. One more, just like that. Inhale, sit nice and low. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, plant your hands. Step it back. Take it through your vinyasa. Right foot steps in between your two hands. Back heel spins. Inhale, rise, warrior one. Exhale, hands come down. Step it back and take it through. And then left foot steps forward, back heel spins. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands come down. Step it back and take it through. And then walk your hands all the way back to your feet. Your feet can be a little wider than hips distance apart. Your hips stack right up over the knees, which stack right up over the ankles. You're going to hook your first two fingers around your big toes. Lengthen your chest forward. And exhale, release. Bend the elbow tips out towards the side wall. Just let the head hang. So it's like a little piece of sorbet here. You can nod your head yes, shake your head no. Notice where you're holding some tension. And you get ready to move into the next portion of practice. So release the hands from your feet. Crawl yourself back out to your downward facing dog. Notice the moment that your heels come up off of the floor. That can be an interesting experiment. Inhale, sweep that right leg up and back behind you. Exhale, draw that knee all the way up into your nose. Step the foot in between the two hands. Spin the back heel down and circle the arms open coming into warrior two. So it's that nice, strong, steady vira two. And your hips sink nice and low. Your spine is nice and long. Your gaze is steady forward. You're going to take two more breaths here. And then press that front leg to straight. Turn those right toes in. Interlace your hands back behind you. Lift the chest towards the ceiling. And exhale, dive and fold forward over those legs, coming into Prasarita Padatanasana. Just giving the shoulders a little bit of rotation. Stacking the hips right up over the ankles. And then release the hands all the way down to the ground. You're going to crawl the hands over to that right ankle. And you're going to take the left hand around the right ankle or maybe around the shin if you've got a little less mobility. And then you're going to bend through your left knee. And bring your right hand to your right hip and just start to revolve the chest towards that right leg. And then inhale, come back up to center, bring the hands down. And then crawl the hands over to that left foot. So the right hand comes around the left ankle or the right uh, calf. Your left hand comes to your left hip. And then as you bend through the right knee, you keep revolving the chest open towards the ceiling. And then come back to center. Bring the hands down to the ground. Lengthen the chest into a flat back. Turn your right toes towards the front of the room. Spin onto the ball of your back foot. Step your right foot back in line with your left, and then you decide vinyasa or straight to your dog. And then inhale, that left leg reaches up and back behind you. Exhale, draw the knee all the way up to the nose. Step the foot through, spin the back heel down. Circle the arms open, warrior two. So establish first that strong foundation through your feet. 
that sink of that front leg down toward the ground so the knee steps right up over the ankle. Your spine is long and your gaze is steady. Take two more breaths here in this nice, strong warrior two. Press your front leg to straight. Turn your feet so that they're parallel. Bring your hands to your hips this time. Lift the chest towards the ceiling. And then this time you're going to exhale. Just come to a flat back. Bring the hands down to the floor right in front of you. Or if the floor is a little far away, now's your chance to grab one of those blocks. Place that left hand directly in front of your nose. And then without, again, letting those hips swivel, they stay steady. You just revolve the chest open towards your right foot. And you start to come into a little deeper twist here. Just the upper spine is working, right? The mid to upper spine, this low spine, your hips are stable. It makes it a lot more challenging. Exhale, right hand comes down to the ground. Plant it right underneath your nose, and you open your left arm up towards the ceiling. So you're really starting to explore how your body really does move in space. Take one more breath here. And then exhale, bring your left hand to the ground. Spin the uh, left foot forward, crawl the fingertips over towards that left foot. Spin onto the ball of your back foot, and then this time, step your right foot forward to meet your left. So you come into Uttanasana at the top of your left. Inhale, lengthen the chest forward. Exhale, release. Bend your knees nice and low now. Utkatasana chair pose. So all that hip stabilization you've been doing, it pretty much applies here as well. Draw the hands to prayer at your heart. And you're going to twist your right elbow on the outside of your left knee. And so you tip your chest forward, hook that elbow, and open yourself up. So the hips are going to want to swivel around to help you with that twist, right? So keep drawing that right knee back in line with your left knee. So you're really just revolving through that upper spine. Take a breath here. And then exhale, release the hands down, coming into that Uttanasana. It's a little bit of a breather. Inhale, lengthen the chest forward. Exhale, bow and release. Bend your knees nice and low, Utkatasana chair. Then draw hands to prayer at your heart and twist. Left elbow on the outside of your right knee. Hugging that left hip back. Lengthening the crown of the head forward. So now as we get a little bit deeper into things, this is where the mind can become a very big challenge. So keep coming back to your breath, especially if it feels a little confrontational. And then exhale, release. Inhale, come to a flat back. Exhale, plant your hands down flat, step it back, take it through a vinyasa, or maybe you just shift straight back to your downward facing dog. This time, float your right leg up and back behind you on an inhale. Exhale, draw the knee up to the nose, step the foot in between the two hands, stay high on the ball of your back foot, and sweep the arms up and overhead, coming into your crescent lunge. So you stabilize through your hips here. Tailbone reaches down towards the floor. Spine is nice and long. You're conditioning through those legs, making them strong, able to support you. Bring the hands to prayer at your heart. Tip your chest forward and float yourself up to warrior three. So you tip your chest forward. Float that left leg back. Really activate and energize through it. Lift through your low belly. And then you're going to split the arms open wide to the side walls. That left hand is going to come down to the floor. Or if you happen to have a block, you're going to enjoy having that block, giving you just a little bit more height. Scooch back a bit. Revolve the chest around towards that front leg. Parvrita Ardha Chandrasana. So it's a big twist and a balance. All at the same time. Take one more big inhale here. 
And then exhale, bring your right hand down. Bring your left hand down. Sweep your left leg up towards the ceiling for just a second. It's a little standing split. And then as you exhale, you're going to lower that left leg down towards the ground just about a third of the way back. So not as far as you were in that crescent pose. Bring your hands to your hips and lift yourself all the way up. And so we're setting ourselves up for Parsvottanasana, the pyramid pose. So you're lined up heel to heel. That right hip is drawing back. You can take your hand and sort of um, act as a, a, like a shelf for that right hip so that you notice that your pelvis is really lined up straight forward. And then you're gonna bring your arms up to the side, turn your thumbs down, and you're gonna take either opposite elbows, a little fist bump, or your reverse prayer. Keep anchoring that right hip back and tip yourself forward, parsvo tanasana. Right? So this is spinal length here. Right? You're reaching the crown of your head forward as that right hip really draws back. If it happens to go past 90 degrees without collapsing through the upper spine, that's fine, but it's not required. So big, long spine here. And then exhale, come all the way up to standing. Release the hands. Take that right hand again. You can use the back or the, the pinky edge as like that little anchor. Reach your left arm up towards the ceiling. And so it's not too dissimilar from this warrior one that we did at the very beginning of class. And then you're gonna to start to tip your chest forward and reach that left arm forward. Keep anchoring that right hip back. And again, if you have a block that might come in handy, you can place it on the inside or the outside of your front foot. That right hip stays anchored way, way back and then you revolve the chest open. So it's a twisted triangle, not from a swivel in the hips, but from a revolution in the spine. As you're ready, reach that right arm up towards the ceiling. Can you feel the spine long, even as it's revolving here? Two more breaths. And then exhale, release that right hand down to the ground. Release that left hand off the block, spin onto the ball of your back foot. Step it back through your vinyasa, or again, always point to dog is a fine option. Inhale, lift the left leg up. Exhale, draw the knee up to the nose, step the foot through, stay high on the ball of your back foot, and lift yourself up to crescent pose. So for me, twisting to the right side, what we just did is so hard because of the way my spine is curved. And then this side always feels like gravy. It might be the same for you or different. But just know as you approach side to side, it's not always going to feel yummy. But sometimes a little confrontation is helpful. And draw the hands to prayer at your heart. It just allows you to approach that confrontation with that steady foundation of breath that you built at the very beginning of class. Tip the chest forward, press down through your left foot, and float yourself up, coming into that warrior three. So if you're like, ah, that first side, just let it go and take this side on its merits for what it is. Anchor that left hip back, lengthen the crown of the head forward, split the arms open wide to the side walls, and then your right hand comes down to the floor or to your block, and your chest revolves open towards that front leg, keeping your back leg really active, reaching the crown of the head forward, finding revolution in your upper spine. Take a nice big inhale here. And then exhale, release the left hand down to the floor, release the right hand off the block, sweep that Right leg up towards the ceiling, just a moment of a standing split. And then exhale, bend through your left knee, step that right foot back just about a third of the way. Press the front leg to straight, bring the hands to the hips, and lift yourself up to standing. So I always find that I, I'm overcrossed when I come up. So I heel toe that left foot to the left so that that pelvis can be pointed directly forward. You can take that little chop of the 
uh, pinky edge of your left hand to just remind your pelvis what even looks like. Split the arms open wide. And then you come into your variation that you took on side one, fist bump, elbow grab, or reverse prayer. Lift the chest. Anchor that left hip back as much as you can and lengthen tip the spine forward. So this is all about expansion. Crown of the head towards the front of the room, left hip towards the back of the room. Can you feel how much you're activating through that belly in order to keep yourself upright? So there's a lot going on here. Take an inhale, and then exhale, come on up to standing. So you're not gonna lose one inch of that length you just built. We're just gonna build some twist into it. So that left hand comes down to that left hip. The right arm reaches up towards the ceiling, like that warrior one at the very beginning of class. Tip your chest forward. Reach that right arm forward. And then the hand comes to the floor or you grab your block inside or the outside of your front foot. The only thing that's different here is that upper spine revolves around. So the hips don't do it for you, right? The upper spine does. And then as you're ready, reach that left arm up towards the ceiling. So it's that deep ringing sensation. Steady, smooth breath here. And then exhale, left hand comes down to the ground. Move that block off to one side. Spin onto the ball of your back foot. Step it back into your plank, vinyasa, or straight to a dog. Inhale, float the right leg up. Exhale, draw the knee up to the nose. Step the foot through. Lower the back knee down to the ground. So this time you can keep your fingertips on the floor, or if you've got blocks, you can bring your hands to blocks, lengthening the chest. We're gonna come into a half split here. So you're gonna press that front leg to straight, shift the hips back until that left knee stacks right up over the right, and lengthen the spine forward. It's just a counter. Some of you guys may have a full split in your practice, right? So if you wanna inchworm that right foot forward, and then you start to inchworm that left knee back, and you come down into your split. I always like to put a block underneath my hip so that there's a little bit of support there lifting the chest up. So either that half split or that full split are totally up to you. But it's that same pelvic shape that you had in Parsvottanasana. It's still pointing forward. So that's why that block can be really helpful. Just give yourself two more breaths here. And then shift yourself up and out, right? So if you're in that full split, you kind of have to inchworm yourself forward. Shift back into that low lunge. You can leave the blocks set up if you're using them. Tuck your back toe. And you're just going to sweep that right leg up and back behind you. Set the right foot down. Lift your left leg up and back behind you. Exhale, draw the knee up to your nose. Step the foot in between. Lower your back knee down to the ground and the fingertips stay on the floor or they come onto your blocks. Shift the hips back, coming into that half split, lengthening the chest forward. Or for some of you guys, you might start to inchworm your way into a full split. It's easy to do that like 80s cheerleader thing, right? Where you've got like the hips are all askew. That's not what we're doing here. So for me, it's not an ego thing. It's an alignment thing. That block comes underneath my hip so that everything can stack up the way that it wants to. Same is true if you remain in the half split or if you've got blocks stacked up to the high heavens. It's just about finding freedom and alignment in your own body. We'll take two more breaths here. And then exhale. Shift yourself back. 
you're using blocks now, you can move them off to the side. Tuck your back toe, you come into that high lunge. Draw the left heel to the butt and then sweep that left leg up and back behind you. Set your left foot down next to your right. Take it through one last vinyasa or just pause in that downward facing dog. And from here, you're gonna hop your way all the way through to seated. So I like to just look forward, hop my feet forward, sit the hips down and extend the legs forward in Dandasana. So if you're someone who likes to use a blanket in Dandasana, now's your chance, slide it right underneath you. You're gonna draw your right knee up towards your chest and you're just gonna set it down right next to your left. So you've got like maybe a fist's distance in between your left leg and your right ankle. Right? And you can wrap your hands around the front of your chin and sit yourself up nice and tall. And then you're gonna bring your right hand back behind you for stability. You're gonna lift your left arm up towards the ceiling. And we take Arda Matsyandrasana, or the half Lord of Fishes. Twist yourself around, bring your left elbow on the outside of your right knee, and it's a pretty deep seated twist. If that's too much, that left hand comes around the front of the right knee, and you twist that way. And so with each inhale, you sit up a little taller, and with each exhale, you twist a little bit deeper. And take two more breaths here. And then unwind. Extend that right leg forward in Dandasana. Sit up nice and tall. So again, it's spine length. And then draw your left knee up towards the chest. So you got that little fist's distance between the inner ankle and the left knee. Bring the left hand behind you, reach the arm up towards the ceiling, and you twist yourself around. If it's a lot, you just bring the hand to the outside of the knee. If you have a little bit more, you bring the elbow on the outside of the knee. So you think of your spine as like a jar coming down, or excuse me, a lid coming down onto a jar, right? It gets a little shorter when you twist, so that's why I'm so focused on getting long in the spine, so that there's space enough to twist that lid onto the jar without crunching your spine. Two more breaths here. And then exhale, unwind. Extend that left leg. One vertebra at a time. You're gonna roll yourself all the way down to the floor. And then you're gonna bend your knees and place your feet flat on the mat. So what twists do, they are wonderful in and of themselves, right? But they also prepare you for back bends. So as you press down through your feet, lift your hips coming into that bridge pose. Chest moves towards the chin, tailbone moves away from you. You can hold the sides of the mat or interlace your hands underneath you. And just enjoy this counter to what you've been doing. And you might even find just a little bit more lift in your chest because you've been doing so much twisting. Take a breath. And then release the hands and lower the hips down towards the ground. Pause for just a second. Find that strong Tadasana in your feet so all four corners are rooted. Press down and lift your hips up. So if this feels like enough, you're gonna stay right here. But because we've been doing all that prep, maybe today we move into a little bit of a deeper back bend. Monitor for you if it makes sense to bring the hands around the ears, the elbows point up towards the ceiling, press down and lift yourself all the way up into that Urdhva Dhanurasana. You don't have to push it. That bridge can be plenty, but Urdhva is here for you as an option. Take one more breath. And then exhale, tuck the chin, lower the shoulders down, lower the hips down, and we all meet on the ground. 
taking a moment. And because all good things come into three in threes, we're going to do one more back bend. So it's your choice, either bridge pose or Urdhva Dhanurasana. Press down through the feet, lift your hips. Maybe hold the sides of the mat or snuggle the shoulders underneath you. Maybe the hands come around your ears and you lift yourself all the way up. Three more long, smooth breaths. And then release. Lower your hips down to the ground. Take a wee pause. And then you're going to extend the left leg long on the floor and draw the right knee up into your chest. Ardha Apanasana. So now we really start to come down the mountain. We give one last little nod to our theme here. Draw the right knee across the body, taking an easy twist on your back. So this is sort of the last version. We can do open twists to warm up. We can do intense deep twists to stabilize in the standing postures. And then we can do these twists to just relax and release. Draw the right knee back up into your chest. Extend the right leg long. Hug the left knee up into your chest. Ardha Apanasana, so it's nice and relaxed. And then draw that left knee across the body. Just really allowing for a sense of release here. Just kind of wringing out whatever's left. And then draw that left knee up into your chest. Draw the right knee up into your chest. Reach down for the outer edges of your feet coming into happy baby. Maybe you give yourself a little rock from side to side. And then draw the knees up into your chest. Rock yourself up to seated. And you're going to either come into a comfortable cross-legged position with your right foot, uh, your right shin crossed in front, or if your knees allow and you want to come into that double pigeon, you can. Reach the arms up towards the ceiling and just release yourself forward. So we take a little longer hold ooh, in that hip opening. And for me, because twist requires so much hip stabilization, this is really yummy. This is when all that work gets to release a little bit and you start to bring your body back to neutral. Just giving yourself a minute or two here. If you have a block, you might find that it's nice to place it under your forehead and just let the block take your weight. And let your attention come back to your breath. Just give yourself about three more steady rounds of breath or maybe like 30 more seconds. And then walk your hands back up. Switch the crossing of the legs so it's either Sukhasana with the left foot in front or you can stack the left ankle on top of the right knee. Reach the arms up towards the ceiling. And exhale, release forward. Just allowing those hips to open.
And you don't have to do much here. Just allow the breath to be steady. Gravity is doing a lot of work for you. And then the inhale, lift yourself all the way up. Move that block off to one side if you used it. Extend the legs forward. Dandasana. So one more time, nice long spine. You've moved it in every direction you possibly can today. Reach the arms up. So just exhale, release forward over those legs. One last little shape, Hashimotanasana. That long spine reaches forward as the backs of your legs get a little bit of lengthening. And then inhale, roll yourself up. Exhale, come all the way down onto your back. And then this time, do any adjustments that you need so that you feel yourself fully supported by the floor, right? completely relaxed. You take one last big inhale through your nose. Exhale, open your mouth, let it go. And for a few really lovely moments, just allow yourself to do absolutely nothing. Close your eyes and rest your body and your mind so that it can process everything that you just put into it. And just allow your next inhale to be a little bit deeper. Begin to wiggle through your fingers and toes. Stretch your arms up and overhead. And then as you're ready, bend your knees, roll to one side and make your way up to a comfortable cross-legged position. So I always finish this way, sitting up tall, just letting your hands rest on the tops of your knees, allowing your eyes to be closed. Just allowing yourself to sit comfortably still for a moment. And then drawing the hands to prayer at your heart, bow your head towards your hands. Finishing out always with that little gesture of gratitude. And taking gratitude with you as you move off of your mat and into your day. Namaste. You did it. Another Monday in the books. Um, it's always such a pleasure, you guys. As always, I'm happy to answer any questions you have in the comments section. Um, this live video will be available archived on the channel. So if you want to come back and examine twists at any time, you can. Uh, and if you enjoyed it, give it a little thumbs up and subscribe. Ding that little bell so you know when new stuff lands. All right. Have a wonderful day, you guys. See you next time.